Night on Prime Business, Tema Oil Refinery nears collapse in a couple of months if President Okufuado does not ensure refineries management and boards develop a comprehensive business strategy to ensure the state facility is operationally and financially viable. We will hear from the Institute of Energy Securities which is calling for drastic change. If any other competitor uh, picks up, it means that you will be losing the attention of investors for your strategic uh, institution like Tor. Also, remittance is expected to grow by 16% following a rebound in economic activity on the global market. With more from the Managing Director of ZP as the world marks Family Day of Remittances. They're finding that they're able to also do a lot more with their monies here. So it's going to increase. I'm actually projecting another 10 to 16% increase for 2022, and we're already seeing the signs of it. Plus, potency of the African continental free trade area will be questioned without a proper plan to integrate the MSMEs. We'll hear from the Ghana, the Ghana US Business Forum organized by the American Chamber of Commerce. It also enables the SMEs which we have created across our, our value chain to also expand their operations and harnessing their competitive advantages across the different markets. All these and more coming shortly, but we'll begin with commodities. Still in a coma, requiring government urgent intervention to save the state facility saddled with over 400 million CD debt. That's the assertion of the Institute for Energy Security IAS. According to the Institute, Tor nears a debt collapse in a couple of months if President Sokufuado does not ensure the refineries management and boards develop a comprehensive business strategy to ensure that it is operationally and financially viable. Now, the IS believes that Russia's war on Ukraine somehow presents an opportunity for the country's petroleum sector to exploit opportunities in the petroleum value chain but the refinery still sits idle, rusting away. Earlier on Business Live, I engaged Executive Director of the IAS, Nana Amwazi VII. According to him, government's approach to reviving the Tema Oil refinery is absolutely disappointing. The crude distillation unit has not refined for almost a year. The RFCC for more than three years is sitting, and um, you are getting seizures at the joint, you are getting corrosion here and there. And so the earlier we, we bring these two plants at all online, the better. At the same time, investors are looking uh, for opportunity within the downstream sector because of the increasing refinery margin. And so if any other competitor uh, picks up, it means that you will be losing the attention of investors for your strategic uh, institution like Tor. And so the earlier the president speaks to it and give a clear strategic direction on Tor, the, the better it will be for us and for um, investors who want to venture and partner with Tor. Now, the managing director of ZP, Andrew Tichi Apia, is predicting a 16% growth in remittances following a rebound in economic activity on the global market. According to him, more Ghanaians in the diaspora are getting new jobs as most countries begin to expand their economic activity after COVID-19. The following report has more. 
Figures from the Bank of Ghana show that Ghana received remittances of $4.5 billion in 2021. Providing some basis for the forecast, Managing Director of ZP, Andrew Tichiapia, stated that there are many Ghanaians in, for example, the Caribbean, who are increasing money transfer to relatives in Ghana. Speaking to Joy Business at a ceremony to mark International Day of Family Remittances, Mr. Tichiapia was hopeful the funds will help in Ghana's economic recovery. I don't see remittance figures declining. Um, it didn't decline in 2008 when we had the meltdown. It didn't decline when we had the COVID lockdowns. Um, it's going to grow, and I'll tell you why it's going to grow. Because what we're also seeing in that in the diaspora, where they are, in their host countries, these, these men and women are being given a lot more opportunities. They are going up the social ladder, so they are taking on more responsibilities. Their wallet sizes or income brackets are going up, so they can only contribute more. Also, the enabling policies that, thanks to President Akufuado and his team, have put together, what you're finding is that they're able to also do a lot more with their monies here. So it's going to increase. I'm actually projecting another 10 to 16 percent increase for 20. Meanwhile, the Director of Financial Sector Division at the Ministry of Finance, Samson Akligo, said government is looking at innovative means to encourage Ghanaians in the diaspora to participate in the bonds market. So. For us in Ghana, our development bank can become a key lever in mobilizing diaspora funds for economic transformation. Again, Ghana's focus on remittances is reflected in the President's decision to set up a diaspora affairs office at the office of the President, and the addition of remittances as part of the national planning agenda. Additionally, the Bank of Ghana has also developed guidelines to regulate the industry. So, so really, it's important to stress that as a country, our efforts in making sure that this industry is developed is really happening. To understand that, over the next four hours, we are going to look at remittances and deliberate on how we can scale it into many other social sectors and economic activities within our country. But I think that I cannot, uh, I would have to end this speech by showing some of the key things that we need to reflect on. For example, the question I have often asked myself is how do we leverage remittances as a derivative for microinsurance? Now, the potency of the African continental free trade area will be questioned if proper plans are not put in place to integrate the activities of trade. That is the assertion by Senior Director at Consumer Package Food Company, PNG Africa, Temitope Iluyemi. According to her, the Secretariat should look beyond presenting trade opportunities to fully fledged companies and rather help in providing frameworks to small businesses to scale up. She was speaking at the U.S. Ghana Business Forum organized by the American Chamber of Commerce Ghana, of which we have more in this report. At the forum, medium and small scale businesses were entreated to forge partnerships for learning and knowledge networking with existing platforms on the after. Temitope Iluyemi, Senior Director at PNG Africa, called for an engagement and communication strategy which would be multi stakeholder in nature and which would employ appropriate ways and means of working. Today, we are discussing the impact of the AFCFTA, and it goes without saying that companies like us would benefit greatly from the implementation implementation of the AFCFTA because it enables us to leverage the skill of our operations across the various countries in Africa and enable us to bring our products at the best value to our consumers so everyone wins. It also enables the SMEs which we have created across our, our value chain to also expand their operations and harnessing their competitive advantages across the different markets. And then COVID-19 hit, you know, if we didn't know that before COVID-19, I believe that the various restrictions that came down like an iron curtain during COVID-19 has should have now informed us of the importance and the necessity of integration within Africa. The United States Department of Commerce Deputy Secretary, His Excellency Don Graves, stated that the U.S. will continue to strengthen commercial connections with Ghana in order to help both countries thrive. Strong commercial relationship. I'm hoping that we can take that 2.7 billion or somewhere around that range and double it in just a matter of two or three years and then double it again in just a few years after that. 
And I may be biased, but as a son of small business owners, I believe that American companies can provide the highest quality products and services to sh truly show you that we are great partners for you. The good thing about good partners and great friends is that we're also willing to speak freely with one another, which the minister knows. He can speak to me to tell me if we're not doing enough, I can speak freely to him and we can fix our problems working together because that's the only way we're going to be able to move forward. Ghana has stood with the United States. The United States will stand with Ghana going forward because that's the only way we can do this together. We share a common vision for a prosperous future that will result in a more equitable, accessible global economy built off of our shared democratic values. The U.S. Ghana Business Forum is aimed at deepening diplomatic and commercial partnerships between Ghana and the United States for the successful implementation for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. This year's event was under the theme Leveraging the AFTA to Promote U.S.-Africa Commercial Partnerships. Well, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, has emphasized the need for central banks in sub-Saharan Africa to coordinate monetary policy measures aimed at stabilizing prices on the African continent. According to him, the impact of recent geopolitical tensions and the COVID-19 pandemic on developing countries underscore the need for increased harmonization of monetary policy tools to withstand global shocks. Dr. Addison spoke at a Financial Stability Board meeting of the Regional Consultative Group for Sub-Saharan Africa in Accra. He observed that the inflation rate across countries in Sub-Saharan Africa stressed the need for African countries to work together in order to control price levels between countries. He maintained that such a move will enhance trade among African countries, reducing Africa's dependency on imports outside the continent. The war in Ukraine has triggered a costly humanitarian an economic crisis. Global spillovers from the conflict is contributing adversely to sustaining the nascent recovery in global growth. It has already aggravated inflationary pressures, especially for fuel and food, and this elevated inflation will complicate the trade-offs that central banks face within the region between containing price pressures and safeguarding Growth. On his part, the governor of the South African Reserve Bank, Lesja Ganyango, stressed that African countries must immediately work together to bring inflation down on the continent. With, uh, inflation, I am sure it will come so many uh, at times. And when uh, one has to ask uh, what keeps central banks awake, and you will arrive at three issues. The first one would be inflation, the second one will be inflation, and the third one will be inflation. And that is actually what is confronting us, that we are now faced with uh, this issue of, um, uh, of uh, global inflation. In our response to the pandemic, um, the response was speedy, it was to scale, um, but it was very clear that the measures that were taken were wartime measures, and that at some stage they would have to be, uh, to be withdrawn. As the global economy opened up and demand started to rise, it became clear that the supply chains could not cope with the uh, rise in, uh, uh, in demand. Now, the Bank of Ghana once again has indicated that it expects inflation rates to slow down by September, despite current development in the global economy, as May inflation rate reached a record high of 27.6% in Ghana. There are projections that prices of petroleum products and transport fares will also go up significantly in the coming days. This has raised concerns about earlier projections that a rate of increase for inflation will start slowing down by the end of the third quarter of this year. Philip Abredu Otu is head of research at the central bank. It's now slow down. Um, but if you recall, I think the governor did indicate at his press conference that we are expecting inflation to peak somewhere around June, July. Um, yes, the latest numbers also came in a little bit strong, uh, almost equivalent to what we saw in April. Uh, but I think the numbers will come down. I, it cannot continue forever. Monetary policy will begin to, to, to work. Um, our discussions with the meteorological department and the data that we are seeing 
the rains this year look a little bit better than last year and given the rains and then the temperature uh, combination I, I think the forecast is for uh, the food situation to improve as we move into 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 September so as we move into September we are likely to see a somewhat improved situation with monetary policy uh, also working alongside to contain the non-food aspect. Let's now talk Ponzi schemes because the central bank has described as worrying the rate in which at which security personnel are falling victim to Ponzi schemes. To reverse this trend, the Bank of Ghana has offered financial literacy training to personnel of the Ghana Immigration Service in the Shanta region. The training was aimed at empowering the security personnel with knowledge in managing their finances and to make the right financial decisions. My colleague Emmanuel Bright Quaker has more in this report. The workshop is part of the Bank of Ghana's annual activities to educate the public on financial management. The training covered critical areas including identification of licensed financial institutions, official means to lodge complaints, loan applications and money laundering. According to statistics by the central bank, the majority of complaints received are sourced from security personnel. Godfrey Kujo of the Financial Stability Department of the bank says most of the security personnel are victims of Ponzi schemes. We, we have been doing this um, for about two years now where we have targeted our security agencies. Um, so we have done this uh, sensitization for the military and the Ghana police and it's the turn of the immigration. And uh, this is very important because we notice that, uh, and this is from our complaint statistics, that a number of complainants are coming from a security uh, agency. And then especially when it comes to when there's an, um, a positive scheme within the, within the country, we notice that our security agencies are the most hit. So when we look at the complaints that are coming from uh, the public when they, uh, in terms of uh, a positive scheme that they have engaged themselves in, we notice that our security agencies are the top the types of uh, complainants. And that's why we thought that it's important that we sensitize them on uh, some of these things so that it doesn't repeat itself. The Bank of Ghana cautioned the public against disposing of their mobile SIM cards after borrowing money from the telecommunication networks. According to Godfrey Kujo, this will affect the ability to access a loan from the banks. Uh, we notice that a few of the public, we, we use our momo to apply for these loans and then uh, we throw the SIM cards uh, away, uh, thinking that it is free money and nobody is coming back at us. What we should understand is that this information is being kept by the credit bureaus. It means that another time if you need loan and you go to a bank, and then uh, the bank will check and know that you once took a uh, mobile loan and you did not pay. And this will affect your ability of getting a loan when you really need that funds. So our advice to the public is that if you take a mobile loan, you need to pay back. Chief Accountant at the Ashanti Regional Command of the Ghana Immigration Service, Joshua Mensa Ayete, says the training would help in reducing the growing statistics of staff losing money to Ponzi schemes. I handle issues of accounts over here. That is why I also came in. But some of the issues, ex example, the complaints issues and all those things, some of us were not privy to some, some of this information as to the levels we are supposed to go through for our, our, our issues to be resolved. And so we are very grateful to the stability, the financial stability department for this particular training. The training is expected to be replicated across all other security agencies. For Joy News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku reporting. That'll be it for the bulletin, but I'll leave you with international business news after which we have sports with Oreko Ampofo. I'm Charles Aite. Do still be Joy News.